Hello, my name is Jay Africa and I'm the Director of Behavioral Health and Recovery Services in Marin County. You probably heard in the news that older adults, those who are age 60 and over, are affected at a higher rate by COVID-19. While that is true, I am here to dispel some myths and share some concrete, concrete tips to support you or your loved ones who are over 60. In Marin, people age 60 and older make up about 28% of the county. To date, more than half of confirmed cases and hospitalizations have occurred among individuals older than 50 years of age, and all reported deaths have been among those 65 and older. While initial U.S. data shows that 80% of deaths due to COVID-19 are people over 65, experts caution us that it is not age per se that increases risk, but other health conditions. Older adults are affected at a higher rate because they are more likely to experience chronic health conditions and or co have compromised immune systems. It is also more likely that they reside in congregate living like a nursing home or an independent living complex. Here are some tips that might help you or your loved ones remain mentally healthy and socially connected. Number one. Stay informed, but limit watching, read, reading, and listening to the news. Trust only credible sites like Marin County's HHS website on coronavirus. Number two, engage in healthy activities like eating nutritious foods, drinking water regularly, getting enough sleep, practicing mindfulness, and staying physically active. Simple exercises like stretching can be done on a chair for those who have physical limitations. Number three, keep regular routines. If you wake up at 9 a.m. and go to bed at 8, keep doing that. Routines help, creating, help with creating stability. If you usually get together with friends every Sunday, try doing that over the speakerphone. Physical distancing is hard for everyone. As an older adult, being socially connected is critical. While having virtual or online connections are helpful, not everyone has a smart, smartphone or computer available to them. If you do not have a phone that has video capability, calling someone is just as meaningful. Sending, hand, sending handwritten notes can make someone feel really special. If you live alone, a few additional tips include, number one, ensure that your emergency contacts medical, healthcare provider numbers, or support networks, such as from your church, synagogue, your mosque, or your hobby groups, are easily accessible. This information needs to be handy so that you can contact them quickly if needed. Number two, ensure that you have a month's supply of your important prescription and over-the-counter medication. Many pharma pharmacies can deliver. Number three, be wary of scams and fraud. Unfortunately, there are people who are taking advantage of the current situation for their own benefit. There are many out there that offer a cure and a treatment for COVID-19. At this moment, there is no cure or vaccine that we know of. Be cautious about giving money to charities you are not familiar with. Many of us don't like to ask for help. We have been taught that it's a sign of weakness. Maybe you feel embarrassed or scared to be turned down. Everyone has been in a situation where they could use some help. Ask a family member or friend to call you every day. If that's not possible, ask a trusted neighbor to check in with you on a regular basis. Develop a buddy system, especially when you are living alone. Calling warm lines, such as the California Friendship Line, at 1-888-670-1360 or the California Statewide Peer Run Warm Line at 1-855-845-7415 are valuable resources to know because they have volunteers that are available to talk, answer questions, and provide resource support. You can also call the HHS Call Center at 415-473-7191 to get information 
on testing, rental assistance, or employment resources. Please know that you are not alone and there are many of us who care deeply about you and your well-being. I wish you and your family good health. <laughs>